Hi guys, it's Gib here, and welcome to episode 2 of me learning game development while remaking classic games. My aim with this series is to show how total beginner, like myself, can approach learning C++ game development by remaking a classic game. I will share all the difficulties and the reality of making a game as a complete beginner, plus a little bit into the mindset of how I approach challenges and problems. I recently released the first episode a couple of weeks ago and, well, it got quite a lot of views. Nope. For me anyway, so thank you for all those that interacted with it, thank you for all that watched it, I really really appreciated the comments and the thoughts that were shared there. So without further ado, let's jump into the second episode. In the first episode, I managed to set a basic project plan, kick the project off, and start making some basic assets for the game. I got a real cursed model of Crash, uh, set up some basic character movements and some basic animations as well. I ended the episode by making some basic crates and setting the properties for those crates. So for example, it would explode in a basic way and also break if Crash jumped on it. And as you can see, this is the end result for the first episode. And well, yeah, it's not going to be running in awards anytime soon. I'm pretty happy with it, uh, but there's a lot of room for improvement, uh, and this episode will help build upon what I've already done. In this episode, I start by making the basic collectibles in the game, so I'll do the Wumper Fruit and the 1-Up Extra Life. I also add some basic properties for those that are found in the game, uh, and tie those in with the crates that I've already built in the previous episode. I then try my hand at making some basic UI and as you'll see later that is completely scuffed. And finally I wrap it all together by making really really basic level uh, just so we can run around and so it doesn't look like a, a big grey cube. So with this plan in mind let's dive into collectibles making. Taking inspiration from the first and second Crash Bandicoots I wanted to add the following collectibles to the game. The Wumper Fruit the extra life one up, and also the Uka Uka mask. At some point I really want to add the crystals and the gems as well, and maybe tie them into the game logic. Uh, however, as I'm a beginner I thought I'd, I'd work on the most basic and simple ones first, uh, and work my way up after that. To tackle this problem, I wanted to break it down into a couple of key elements. Firstly, I wanted to create the necessary C++ classes in Unreal. Secondly, I needed to get necessary models for each of these collectibles, um, either from Maya or from Sketchfab. And thirdly, I need to tie both of those things together, so I need to create necessary blueprint children in Unreal so that I can represent the collectibles in my game world. For creating the C++ classes, I wanted to use a really similar approach as I did for creating the crates. Basically, I would have an overarching collectibles class uh, at the top in which all of my logic would sit and then I would make blueprint children off of those classes and those would inherit the properties from the collectibles class. And actually this class didn't end up too big, R really all we did was add logic to remove the actor or remove the collectible when it was overlapped, so when Crash interacted with it, and also to make it spin slightly in the world. Um, everything else was actually inherited from other components that we'd built already, so namely the, the trigger component and the jump trigger component. Now just a word of caution on my approach here, I'm sure a lot of you are watching this code and thinking, oh my god, that's horrible, that's ugly, uh, it, you know, you're doing all these things wrong. Um, as a beginner, really what I'm trying to do is write things that work uh, and then obviously look at best practices and stuff afterwards. And, and that's kind of a good approach because it's really easy to get bogged down in how you should do it and what you should actually do versus just making things that work initially and then iterating it as you move throughout different projects. Part two was making the necessary models in Sketchfab or in Maya. Since I just learned Maya, I really wanted to test my skills out and create the Wumper Fruit and the One Up Life. And it looks just like the real thing. Um, I took a pretty uh, basic approach for both of them, uh, in which I got a reference image, uh, attached it to a plane, and then started to model around it.
As you can see, these turned out pretty okay. I mean, they still look really, really janky, especially the, the Wumpa Fruit. But I was really happy with the 1UP Live. That looked pretty cool. Um, and as you can see, uh, what I was doing was largely just manipulating individual uh, vertices uh, and points on, on the grid. I don't think this is the best approach by any means, but again, I'm a beginner. I, I tried my best with what I had. For the Aku Mask, well, there was a really good model on Sketchfab, which I saw. It, it was free, so shout out in the description to the maker. Uh, plus, this was probably going to be a little bit too difficult to generate at the time that I had, so I just took it from there and, and added it. Uh, to actually make these usable, I needed to create representations of these in Unreal Engine. Uh, and to do this, what you need to do is you need to create a Blueprint child class under the necessary C++ class that has been implemented. From there, you attach the static mesh of the model from made from the previous part, and then you have a basic representation of the collectible in the game world. Now, the really great thing about this approach is the, the components that we built were pretty modular, meaning that we could attach them to any blueprint child. Now, this is great because actually a lot of the same properties uh, for the collectibles are found with the crates. So rather than just creating new components from scratch, we can reuse the ones we already have and create some additions for collectibles. And this ended up being the end result for the first part. So actually the collectibles are in the world. When you walk over them, they disappear, which is great. Um, and they kind of spin and look cool, I think. So uh, yeah, I was, I was really, really happy with this. It didn't take me a crazy long time to do this either. Um, I reused a lot of what I'd already done in the previous section. So yeah, I, I, was, I was really happy with the progress. But we know that's not enough uh, for us in the game. So in the next section, we're going to add some specific properties to these collectibles so that they can add to the game mechanics. My approach with the collectibles was pretty simple. I took reference from the game and looked at what were the most fundamental properties that these collectibles had. From that, I tried to determine whether a beginner would be able to do them or not, uh, and then listed them out as a result of that. What I was left with was the following list in priority order. Firstly, I wanted to make sure that the collectibles spawned from the crates. And as an added bonus to this, I wanted to randomize what collectible came from the crate, since my asset that I was using was a question mark crate. The second thing I wanted to do was make the collectible spin away when I was within a spin range. And the third and final thing I wanted to add as part of an MVP was to add to counters whenever Crash interacted with those collectibles. A small segue here and discuss the com concept of an MVP. So basically here, as a beginner, I'm trying to make a minimum viable product. That is, uh, I'm trying to make a product which is basically good enough, but is iterable and something that I can work on. This is important to establish because especially as a beginner, you don't want to overcomplicate things and get into a position where you feel burnt out or you want to give up. And actually the premise with an MVP is that it's iterable. So once you've made the foundational requirements, you can actually iterate and then going to the more complex requirements seems a lot more easy. A good example of this is the uh, Aku Mask. So I added a basic counter to simulate the properties of collecting three masks for the, the invincibility. However, I didn't actually code the invincibility yet because that's way too complicated and I was likely just to get frustrated and want to leave. Okay, boring nerdy segue aside, let's start with the first requirement, which is randomly spawning from crates. The basic concept here is if it's a question mark crate, the crate can either spawn uh, the Wumba Fruit or the one of extra life. I wrote a really primitive randomized function and basically weighted it more towards the Wumba Fruit than the extra life. Uh, and also I just needed to make sure that when the box was broken, uh, a new actor would be spawned representing either the Wumpa Fruit or the Extra Life. I also added a little bit of a bonus thing here, which was I created a blueprint class for a bushel of Wumpas. So basically many different Wumpas, since they can also spawn from crates as well. This was really easy. It was just about manipulating the static mesh only. They have the same properties inherited from the collectibles classes and the other trigger classes that we'd already built. The second MVP requirement was making the collectibles spin away if you spun them when you were too close. In the game, if you spin them, they accelerate towards a direct order quite quickly and then disappear. I tried to emulate that in my game. 
Uh, I had a little bit of difficulty making the smooth velocity path for the, the collectibles, but overall it works enough for an MVP. The final thing was adding basic counters to the collectibles. Essentially what I wanted to do here, as already described, is add the counters for the health. Um, I also added the counters for uh, adding an extra life if the player collects 100 Wumpers. Uh, and also, if you collect three uh, masks, you also get a, let's say, trigger for the invincibility. And again, this is this is how I ended up when it comes to collectibles. So yeah, actually, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, they interact with the crates, Crash can interact with them. They don't actually do anything yet. That's definitely going to be the next set of requirements that I'll build in the next episode. But for now, they're in the game world. They spawn when they need to, and it all looks pretty decent. The final things I wanted to do on the episode were build a basic UI uh, and start building a basic level for the game. Now when it came to building the UI, I again took reference from the game. This is the easiest way to actually understand what I want to build. And it seems there are three basic things you want to show on the UI. The first shows the number of crates broken and the total number of crates. The second is the number of lives that the player has and the third is the number of Wumper Fruit. Now getting the number of lives and Wumper Fruit was quite easy. I just used what I'd built in the property section and the counters already provided this information. The total number of crates was a little bit more tricky. Uh, basically I wrote a function to iterate over the number of actors in the world that were breakable, breakable crates um, and then update that when a crate had been broken. For this I used Unreal's widget panel and uh, yeah this was the end result. It is absolutely terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is something I'm going to improve upon later, but yeah, th this was definitely not my strong suit. I didn't dwell upon this too much. Uh, I wanted to try and build on other things rather than the UI at the beginning. For the level building, I tried to use kind of a jungle rollers theme, so more like jungle effects. All of the textures I actually got from uh, Unreal Bridge, so I didn't make any of these myself. Um, and I just tried to add a couple of elements which weren't just crates. And this ended up being the, the final result for this stage of the project. As you can see, it's not the most exciting level in the world, but it's a little bit different. I'll, I'll for sure be adding to this as I come towards the end of the project. Okay, folks, so that's the end of this iteration. I managed to add collectibles to the game. I gave those collectibles some properties. I created a bare bones level, which is not really a level. Uh, and I added the most cringiest UI ever. The important thing that I just want to reinforce at the end of this video is just the process that you need to go through as a beginner. So a lot of the things that you see online is a perfect end product and honestly that's not really the reality. Quite often you will make loads of mistakes, you will uh, come out with let's say slightly different products than what you're anticipating but that's okay. It's all part of being a beginner, you're able to iterate the work that you're doing and honestly when you start doing these things you'll get better and better and things will become easier the next project you take on. Game development is honestly supposed to be hard. That's why you have lots of very talented people working on games for us all to play and enjoy. Find yourself a fun process like I'm doing now and honestly, you'll have a blast and you'll learn very quickly. Thanks so much for watching again, folks. I really appreciate it. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see differently, again, I'm a beginner at YouTube videos, so just let me know and I'll try and do it. If you do like the content, then please feel free to, to like and subscribe um, if you want to. Um, and anyway, have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode.